Friends, we've come to the end of the book of Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 5. And when I started this book, I mentioned that it was a series of acrostic poems. You know, like in English, it would be a line beginning with A, next line beginning with B, next line beginning with C, right? But in actuality, that's not quite right. Uh, the fifth chapter is not an acrostic poem, almost as if just a despair of everything that the, uh, that the writer is saying just sort of overtakes him and he just said, uh, okay, okay, no more alphabet. <laughs> let me just let me just tell you what's on my heart. So let's take a, a look at it. It's, it begins with this. It says, remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. Okay, that, that's the basic story we've been looking at, that the curse of the covenant of the Mosaic Covenant has come upon uh, the people of Jerusalem and they seem to have lost everything. And so now what, what are we? we we're, or, we're orphans, we're fatherless, we're like widows. You know, we're, we're, we, we have to pay for everything. We pay for water, we pay for wood. We, our pursuers are at our necks. Uh, we're weary. Uh, we can't we can't get the bread we need to eat and why well okay again saying what we we already know our our fathers sinned and are no more and and we bear their iniquities you know the fact of the matter is there are consequences multi-generational consequences for sin and the destruction of Jerusalem has been long in coming and it, it's just it's fallen on this generation and it gives a whole bunch of details, but here's one that just said, women are raped in Zion. You know, just how bad is it that, that that's happening? And princes are hung up by their hands. So the just most, the most profound disgrace uh, has taken place. It's just so sad. And this has affected everybody and there's no music anymore. Uh, there's no joy. There's no dancing taking place. Uh, the crown has fallen from our head, the writer says. Woe to us. We have sinned. So in case we thought, well, maybe he's just saying the fathers have sinned, but we haven't sinned. No, he's owning up to so Look, we have sinned. And all this has come upon us. And for this, our heart has become sick. For these things, our eyes have grown dim. For Mount Zion, the, the, the mountain on which the temple is built, Mount Zion, which lies desolate, jackals prowl over it. All right, it's devastating. But then here's this note at the end, a couple of important things here. But you, O Lord, reign forever. Okay, that's important to remember. Your throne endures to all generations. You haven't been knocked off your throne, God. But then, why do you forget us forever? Will you forsake us for so many days? Is it going to be forever and ever that you're going to forsake us? So final plea, last couple of verses here. Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old. This is not going to happen without a deep repentance. Unless, unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. That's where the book ends. So remember us. Remember what's befallen of us. We're like slaves in the land that you gave us. We're, we're prisoners of war for our sins, for the sins of our fathers. And the crown has fallen off of our head. And even Mount Zion, the temple mount, lies desolate. Yet you, O Lord, reign. Why do you forget us? Restore us. Turn us. To yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you've utterly rejected us. Now, this makes me think of David, who comes, you know, far, far earlier than this moment. You know, David about a thousand BC, and this, you know, think of the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, five eighty six BC. So quite a bit before, but you go back to Psalm fifty one and to David's repentance. And what does he say? 
Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. So that's that fits in well with David. But then go to David's greater son, all right, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and and just think about not only his death, but his resurrection from the dead. Talk about answered prayer and hope for you and me. Thank you, Father, for the resurrection of Christ. In the bleakest and darkest hour, we look to your son with hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.